Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to explain to you why this fermenter here, the Anvil Bucket Fermenter, is my favorite fermenter out of all of the ones that I own. And I own Spike CF5, I own a Firmzilla, I own several plastic bucket fermenters as well, but this is always the one that I end up reaching for when I just need to ferment something in general. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you why. As always with my product review videos, um, I need to make sure that I disclose my relationship with the manufacturer, and in this case, I actually don't have a relationship with Anvil at all. All of the equipment that I own from Anvil I've bought with my own money, and I have gotten it because it's something that I wanted to check out. So for those of you who aren't aware, Anvil Brewing is a subsidiary of Blickman Engineering. That's the Blickman Engineering that makes super high-end home brewing equipment and has been around for a very long time. If Blickman is the Lexus, then Anvil is the Toyota. I've had this bucket fermenter for about a year now and I've used it for probably about half of the batches that I've done over the last year, either using this fermenter or this fermenter here. There's already a video on the Spike CF5 out there on my channel. It's a high quality fermenter, a unit tank. It has a whole bunch of specific functionality. It's very complicated and has a lot of uh, capability, but the Anvil is something entirely different and it deserves a mention as well. So just a quick overview on this thing. This is a seven and a half gallon fermenter, which means that it basically gives you the perfect amount of space to ferment your typical five gallon batch. That's plenty of headspace to deal with high Krausen. Uh, if you're fermenting something like a wheat beer or a Belgian ale, it is a bucket style fermenter, which means that this lid comes off entirely and the entire diameter of the fermenter is open. It's made entirely of 304 stainless steel, which is the standard in stainless steel fermentation. It's got relatively thin walls, it's relatively lightweight. It has two sturdy handles here, which are welded on, and a lid that runs the entire circumference that is connected by these little clamps here. Uh, there's also a gasket underneath the lid, and there's a singular hole on the top of the fermenter in which you can place an airlock. And also it has a conical bottom, it's not a real conical, it doesn't have the same kind of conical shape as this guy over here. Um, it's more of a dish shape, but the whole point of it is that it collects all the true, the yeast and everything as your beer finishes fermentation and allows you to, to take that beer uh, directly off of the top of the yeast cake instead of sucking up a whole bunch of true and stuff like that. At the very bottom of the fermenter, there's also this ball valve here, which is a weldless ball valve. So there's a gasket on the inside of the fermenter that creates that seal. And on the other side, there's an adjustable dip tube. That's very handy for ensuring that you can pick up a beer and beer only and not be picking up yeast cake and trube and stuff like that when you're trying to transfer into a keg or bottle off of the fermenter. It's very handy to have a ball valve at the bottom because you don't have to actually open the fermenter in order to transfer your beer into your packaging. At the very end of the ball valve is a half inch NPT thread and it does come standard with a hose barb which you can hook up to a regular silicone hose but that half inch NPT thread is still very useful so you can attach plenty of other different things to it as long as they have half inch NPT threading. So there's a few optional accessories that I would highly recommend getting with this fermenter. The first is the neoprene jacket that's on it. It is an optional accessory, uh, but it does make it a lot easier for you to maintain a constant steady temperature with the fermenter. Because it's a thin wall metal fermenter, it's not the best at retaining heat. Uh, so this helps quite a bit if you're trying to keep your fermentation hot or just generally trying to keep it at the same temperature. But if you want a little bit more precision at keeping your fermentation at the right temperature, Anvil also offers a cooling system which works with this fermenter. It goes right down through the central hole here and you can use an ice bath or a glycol chiller if you like uh, in order to actually keep your fermentation at the right temperature. The best thing about this fermenter for me is that it just hits that perfect sweet spot for giving you all the benefits of stainless steel fermentation without the added cost and without the added complexity of something like the Spike CF5 here. The impact of fermenting in stainless steel honestly can't be understated. It is a game changer. So first of all, stainless steel is not going to react to hot water, high temperatures, or cleaning chemicals in a bad way. It's not gonna leach anything. If you've ever had a fermenter kind of buckle on you and, and melt a little bit because you put too much hot water into it or too hot of water into it, or you've left chemicals or sanitizer in there too long and it starts to turn cloudy and you know that there's some chemicals leaching out of that plastic, stainless steel is gonna solve that problem for you. Secondly, it's also very scratch resistant, especially compared to plastic. So you're less likely to create a situation where you have a little recess or a little scratch where there's bacteria that are surviving your sanitation regimen and then going on to spoil your beer down the road. And because of that, stainless steel is also significantly easier to sanitize and clean. It doesn't retain any sort of odors or flavors from batch to batch and trube and hop debris and Krausen and stuff like that 
doesn't stick to it as much as it would stick to plastic. It's so much easier to clean this. Honestly, like most of my cleaning is done with an initial rinse. And then after that, it's a little bit of PBW solution and a star sand, and then you're good to go. One of the primary sources of infections for home brewers, if they're using a plastic bucket fermenter, is actually the ball valve. So if you don't take your ball valve apart and clean it on the regular, you're just kind of asking for trouble. With this ball valve, it's stainless steel. All the parts thread together. There's no danger of cross-threading or breaking anything. It's super easy to just take it apart, sanitize as you need to, put it back together, and put it back in the fermenter. And with that sanitation piece in mind, if you ever ferment a Brett beer or a wild beer or sour beer of some kind in a plastic fermenter, you might as well say goodbye to fermenting regular beers in that fermenter from that point forward because there's always going to be a little bit of that souring bacteria or wild yeast that's going to stay behind in the plastic itself because it's porous and it's going to pass forward to the next beer. The steel fermenter, you can actually just toss boiling water into it and it will instantly kill anything in there that is persistent. It's uh, actually the most effective and probably cost effective way to sanitize your fermenter if it's made of stainless steel. It has a tremendous strength to weight ratio and it's very durable. You're not gonna crack it, you're not gonna break it. Um, if anything, you might bend it a little bit, but it's surprisingly sturdy. Obviously, you should be taking care of your fermenters so that that doesn't ever happen to them, whether they're made of plastic or made of metal, but um, just, it's something to keep in mind. It's a lot more durable than plastic. And the last thing about stainless steel that's awesome compared to plastic is that it is oxygen impermeable, whereas plastic will let in a small amount of oxygen over the course of your brew. It's technically a porous material. So just keep that in mind if you're brewing oxygen sensitive beers in plastic fermenters. Some types of plastic like PET are a lot more oxygen impermeable than others. So there is definitely some wiggle room in that concept, but stainless steel still blows it out of the water. So really quickly, let's just break down all the pros and the cons on this thing. So first of all, pros, all, everything from the stainless steel that I just mentioned, that's a pro for this system. It is available at a really great price point for that capability. You don't need to necessarily pay five to $1,500 for a conical unit tank when you can get most of that capability out of this guy. The adjustable dip tube is definitely a pro on this guide because it's not a straight outlet port. You get to actually pick where you're pulling the beer from so you can rotate that ball valve and rotate the internal racking arm so that way you're always pulling clear and finished beer into your keg and minimizing the amount of pickup of yeast and trube and stuff like that. It's a lightweight fermenter with great handles, which means that it's actually very easy to pick this up put it in my fermentation chamber or take it back out as I need to. It's really not all that much heavier compared to a plastic bucket, but I'm not just lifting it up by a single handle like I would for the plastic bucket. I get two handles with this one and it's much easier to control it that way. One thing I'm also a really big fan of is actually the lid design and the way that it connects to the fermenter. Uh, because of these little clips here, they actually push down a little bit on the lid. There's a gasket on the inside, it creates a really good seal. Um, and when you have a plastic bucket, everybody's had that experience with the plastic bucket where the lids are really, really tough to actually take off. They like, you have to like pop off a section at a time. And actually I've almost lost fingernails trying to do that. It's not a great experience usually. Um, and sometimes you can get a tool that'll do it for you. But the point is this is much, much easier to deal with. And when it's the same kind of bucket design, it gets the job done much, much easier and much faster. And, um, that's a real pro for me. This is also a phenomenally easy system to clean. Um, when I'm cleaning my Spike CF5 over here, usually what I have to end up doing is depressurizing it, taking all the lid off, take all of my tri-clamp fittings off, take all of my gaskets off, take everything apart, and I usually actually have to end up scrubbing it with a sponge because I don't really have a good CIP system set up. That's on me, that's not on the fermenter. But the point is, there's a lot more to take apart and clean, sanitize, put back together than there is with this. This is just one part. With the exception of taking the ball valve off, uh, it's really all finished cleaning in about five minutes. There's also plenty of upgrade paths for the Amble bucket. So obviously you have the, this uh, neoprene jacket here and the temperature control system that I mentioned, but there's also modifications you could do to the top here. Now, this is a regular airlock bung type situation you have on top here, but there's also uh, a modification that turns this into an inch and a half tri-clamp bulkhead. So you can actually put a weldless tri-clamp in there and then you have the freedom to do things that you would normally be able to only do with something like this, um, with this. So I'd recommend checking out Hops and Gnarly's YouTube channel. I'm gonna put a link to his stuff up here. He has a whole bunch of videos that cover modifying your handful bucket fermenter to do stuff like that. So I'd definitely recommend checking him out. 
And the last pro that I have for this system is that it actually holds a tiny amount of pressure, which is somewhat useful. Um, it's definitely not pressure rated. I would not try to pressure ferment in this. You won't succeed because all the pressure is going to bleed out from underneath the, uh, the lid here. But it does hold like 1 to 2 PSI before it actually starts to bleed pressure. And that's very useful for a number of reasons. And one thing you can do with that tiny amount of pressure is do a pseudo closed transfer to avoid oxygen pickup in your beer as you're transferring it from fermenter to packaging. I have a short video that I published on my channel, I'll link that up here, that covers how to do something like that with this fermenter. So if you're curious, check it out. It's a nearly oxygen-free method uh, that should help you a lot if you're brewing something like a New England IPA or some type of other oxygen-sensitive beer. So now let's move on to the cons, because this system is certainly not without cons. The first con I have is really the biggest gripe that I have with this system. That is that this is a weldless ball valve here, which means that it uses a gasket on the inside to seal it. So when you rotate this ball valve up and down a little bit to position the racking arm, uh, sometimes that actually causes the gasket to loosen, and then you start to leak beer out from underneath the ball valve, and that's not really a good day. Um, it's You can't really correct that problem without putting your arm inside the fermenter and tightening the nut on the other side, so you're basically out of luck at that point, uh, unless you're transferring your beer quicker than you, the beer is leaking out. I tend to pre-position my dip tube and make sure that that locking nut is tight on the inside uh, to, in order to make sure I have a good seal before I even put beer into the fermenter in the first place. And that's helped me kind of avoid some of those issues, but uh, every so often it still happens. The second con is because it's a bucket, it's not going to be able to get around it. This is susceptible to some oxygen pickup, so you can still do a closed transfer with it, but it's not entirely impermeable to oxygen in the process. You're still going to end up sucking oxygen in through the airlock no matter what you do. Unless you modify this so it has a tri-clamp bulkhead on here and you put a carbonation post on there or a pressure relief valve and you can actually feed CO2 into it as you're taking beer out of it, it's never going to really be a truly closed transfer, so that's just something to keep in mind. It generally isn't going to destroy your beer unless you're completely careless about it. So you're still very much capable of producing quality New England IPAs and Pilsners and other oxygen sensitive beers using this fermenter, but you just need to keep that in mind. Be very careful about oxygen pickup because it can happen in this system. But honestly, don't be too afraid of it. I have an IPA in here as I speak. Another thing I don't like about this system is that this lid up here is very sharp. It will cut into bungs and it can cut into your fingers if you're not careful. So um, that's just something to be aware of. It really shouldn't be the case. They should file that down or do something to it that makes it a little bit more uh, smooth to the touch, but it does have some sharp edges, so just watch out. Another con here is that this is a thin-walled steel system. It's going to be very susceptible to swings in temperature. It's going to transfer any sort of outside ambient temperature to that beer very quickly. Remember, steel is a very good conductor of heat. Plastic is a much better insulator than steel, so if your beer is warmer than the air surrounding it, you're going to lose heat really quickly unless you have this neoprene jacket on here, and vice versa. If it's colder and you're trying to keep it cold and the surroundings are warm, it's going to be pretty hard to keep it cold unless you have insulation on it like this or you're constantly running a cooling system to it. For this particular fermenter what I do like to do is keep it in a fermentation chamber like this chest freezer here and then I don't have to worry too much about swings in temperature. That's really the easiest way to do it if you happen to have a chest freezer in the first place. There's a couple other methods that you can use. I've published a video on five ways to control your fermentation temperature if you're curious about that sort of thing so that's going to be looked up here in the corner. The last con is it's cheap but it's still not as cheap as some of the PET uh, plastic fermenters out there that can handle pressure like the firm Zilla, although Anvil is starting to come out with some actual PET pressure capable fermenters of their own, so that might be changing the, the game a little bit here. It can be a bit of an investment, but I think it is worth it in the long run because you're getting that stainless steel capability. For me, what makes this fermenter worth it at the end of the day though, is just it hits this really nice sweet spot where you get stainless steel, you get all the benefits of that, but you don't have to deal with the complexity or the cost of something like this unit tank. So at the end of the day, this is something that I really highly recommend, and I'm gonna be dropping links down below in the description box if you wanna pick one up for yourself. So if you got one of these things, let me know what you think about it. I love mine, and I'd be curious to know if you've made any changes or modifications to yours, let us all know what they are. Anyway, if you liked the video and you learned something, please hit that like button. Please also hit that subscribe button as well for more content like this. Grain to Glass is coming back, I am almost finished with some of those videos so right now so just be patient i'm sorry for the train of non-brewing videos but uh, that's soon to be ending if you want to support the channel there's a number of ways to do so i've got a t-shirt store it includes this one which 
I don't know, it might pertain to you, but there's plenty of other designs down below the description box if you wanna check those out. It's a great way to support me. I also have channel memberships and a Patreon, so big thank you to those people and to the Patreon supporters for helping out, uh, especially helping drive the production behind this channel. I also have an Amazon store where I've linked everything that I highly recommend that I brew with, that I've used to build out my brewery space, that I film on YouTube with anything that is related to this channel and its uh, production or its content is linked in that store if it's available on Amazon. That includes this fermenter as well. I am also available on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer if you want to check out some more frequent content. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. And until the next time, cheers doesn't come standard with the fermenter. It does, uh... <laughs> this, this fermentation's ruining this video.